Alrighty, welcome to an Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. We've got a Concealed Courtyard at Rare. Not, not great. Fierce Retribution, two mana, destroy target attacking creature, or six mana, just destroy target creature. Eh. I like the Visage Bandit when I have something good to copy. I'm not necessarily going to want to first pick it. Form the Posse seems pretty good. It's like a fourth year Lingus, but way less than half as good. But fourth year Lingus is pretty busted, so that's interesting. None of the commons are particularly close. So it really is, do I want the bandit or do I want form a posse? Mm, I don't think I want fierce retribution. Return the favor is cool, but I don't think uh, that's what I'm looking for. Let's 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 try to form a posse. We'll see. This card seems like it, it could do some good stuff. Also, it's pretty splashable. The effect is large and good at in the late game, so I could I definitely see splashing this. Oh... Mr. Stoyer, how nice of you to join us. I kind of wish I took the, the clone now. Two mana, Flying Vigilance 03, but on your turn it's always a 1-3 because you've drawn a card, and then whenever you commit a crime, you can loot. Oh, Repulse is just so good. There's also Ariat the Beguiler. Four mana, 4-4 four, four lifelink, but it, you can steal their things with auras. I don't know about all that. All right, it's going to be one of the blue cards. Even though I took Form the Posse first, there's no card in red or white that's close. My guess is Repulse is still better. I, I like Duelist of the Mind, but... Oh, we got to start to... This could be a Jeskai Control deck. <laughs> you never know. We'll, we'll see where we end up. But I'm in, I'm in for this. I tried to stay away from Blue, but then, you know, I, just when I thought I was out, they, they sucked me back in for one last draft. That's not true. This isn't even the last draft I'm going to do today. <laughs> And, you know, after a full day of drafting in the release event, I'm probably going to have to unwind by doing a Vintage Cube draft later. We'll see. Um, here, oh, I really do like Shepherd of the Clouds. This card seems really strong. Five mana, four, three, Flying Vigilance, and it just gets a creature back for your graveyard to your hand, or actually permanent. And if you have a mount, you can put it into play, but you don't even need a mount for that card to be good. Holy Cow is also not that bad. And I don't think Bounding Vedalar Felidar is great. I mean, it's a good card, but I think that uh, Shepard's better. So I think I'll take this and perhaps be blue-white splash form a posse. Yeah, I would splash this card. I really wish I had the clone now because cloning uh, Shepard's also pretty nice. But, you know, you can't, you can't uh, uncrack an egg, as it were. Ooh. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, it doesn't even work with form a posse. If you plot form a posse, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Uh, destroy a blocking creature. Ooh, Getaway Glamour I think is pretty good. Like, two and a white to kill a creature with the, the highest power. And then you can also flicker uh, one of your creatures or one of their creatures. I think this card's actually going to do a lot of different co pretty cool things. Also, Flickering Shepherd is really nice. So this looks good. This looks good. Hey, what up, Jund Neater? I, I, I like where this is going. All right, last time I'll mention it, but the this would also be good with the clone, so you're on borrowed time, form a posse. Ooh, ooh, I do like a Reckless Lackey in general. Winged Griffin. Three, it's a four mana, three, two flying, which isn't that great. And then, but when it dies, you make a one, one is pretty cool. The Jin seems just fine. It's not like amazing. I mean, honestly, the best card here is at knife point, I think, but I'm not very close to taking this and Reckless Lackey is also really good, but I don't think I'm supposed to take it. I mean, I could take it, but Repulse is so good. Let's just take a white card here. Probably the Wanted Griffin. Or maybe, I mean, maybe I take a, the Wingsmith because it's pretty good with Shepard. And if I leave up mana, that then I can just get this to be a 2-4 flyer. Rakdos joins up, joins the crew. This town ain't big enough. That just reminds me of that song with the... the the dudes with the cowboy hats, the big enough or whatever. Uh, I think this card's pretty pretty strong. Five mana to bounce two of their things is good, or two mana to bounce one of yours and one of theirs. Those are both effects I like to have access to. Get to uh, set up a lot of Shepherd of the Clouds things. A Thornado. Mm, I don't think Shifting... Shifting Grift is interesting. So you can pay four mana to switch creatures, and then I can get away Glamour to steal it back, or Town Ain't Big Enough to steal it back. 
or repulse. I have three things. All right. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to try to see if I can shift some grift here. <laughs> this deck is, this, this, uh, this deck is looking quite tricksy. I, I, I like it. Even though forming a posse, one last job, like I said, so five mana to get a creature back. Oh, I just saw this card looking for cube cards. I don't think this card is good. Uh, what else do we got? Humiliate. Oh, that's a white black card. I don't really want that. Oh, blue white desert. Yeah, it's got to be fantastic for me. So let's just slam this. Could go for some cheap stuff. I'm glad I took the wingsmith. This is a good blocker at least. Three mana, two, four defender. Sack a draw a card, make a treasure is not bad. Concealed courtyard isn't a card I'm a color I'm splashing, but lands are always nice. I don't really want the vault buster. I could take Oasis Gardener. This actually looks like kind of a decent Oasis Gardener deck. And then I'll take the bounce spell over area at the Beguiler. And we've got a good start to like a blue-white control deck that's really gonna be trying to do do some do some grifting here. <laughs> We've got a couple more picks in this pack. I have like the one extra card compared to uh, MKM. It feels like pack sizes are better. Oh, another. Oh, this is tough because I like the desert. Deserts are always good to just take, especially half on color ones. You never know, right? But a draw three cards card, it's getting a little slow. Eh, let's play in the heist. Let's see if we can get there. Oh, now do I want, I think I want the stop cold over Sterling Supplier, though I'm really not that interesting. And taking both and then here someone can have a pitiless carnage why not well it didn't get past a single red card so a form of posse didn't really work out whereas the clone would have been pretty nice with shepherd and all the bounce and stuff but it's all right last pick skullduggery huh an unlicensed hearse huh oh memory jar <laughs> that's funny oh there's another clone well i do kind of want one so i guess i'm in i don't think unlicensed hearse is particularly great and I don't think Annie joins up as the colors I want. So let's just take the Bandit. Really looking for some cheap stuff here, like the 05 Crab. More cards like Repulse. Just I've got a lot of cards that uh, are going to be good kind of in the late game. But I need some early game stuff. All right, now Fierce Retribution looks great. So I'm probably going to take that. Yeah. Two mana to destroy an attacking creature is exactly what this deck wants. And I don't really want any of these things. I guess I would probably play Harrier Strix, but I think I'll slam that. I don't think that the Memory Vessel is good enough for cube. Costing three red red instead of five colorless is a pretty big downside. And Memory Jar is also, like, not even great. It's just, it's fine. <laughs> Archive Trap. Not really looking for Archive Trap. What is going on? Where are my white and blue cards? All these cards are so bad. Um, huh. What am I supposed to do here? This is kind of a beating. I could take Archive Trap because if I pick up two of them, it's a pretty legit win condition. And I'm just not playing. I'm not going to play a Bounding Fel Felidar in my deck. That's like not close to what I want. All right. Let's just take the trap. I don't know. Hmm. Destroy target, tap creature, you gain two life. Also seems like the kind of card I'm looking for. Though Geyser Drake might actually be... Maybe Geyser Drake is what I want. Geyser Drake, I've got the, the Failed Fording, Repulse. The uh, This town ain't big enough. Yeah. I mean, I like Ariette's Lullaby. I think also one of Steer Clear or Lullaby could wheel. And I think the Drake is, is just a pretty strong card. Oh, I could take Deep Muck Desperado and try to mill them out with the Archive Trap, but I don't think that's as good as maybe just taking Jailbreak Scream. Or Lock Picker, how many? I have five instants and three sorceries. Maybe just the Lock Picker is going to be great. Like, let's see, it's good with the this. It's good with Forma Posse. It's not actually great with Forma Heist. It's good with Repulse. Could be good with Shifting Grift. Probably not good with Fierce Retribution, but... Yeah, I guess I could flashback uh, Archive Trap, sure. Mm -hmm. All right, I mean, I've, I'm picking up some stuff here. I still could use some smaller or some cheaper cards to, to kind of protect me. Though Getaway Glamour is also a three-minute removal, two-minute removal, a bounce spell. 
a three mana two four, a three mana two three, a repulse. Okay, okay, I'm feeling a little better about all that. And then I've got some good big stuff to make sure you do win the game when the game goes long. One of the things you got to watch out for is if you go too heavy on the early stuff and you don't have enough late game stuff, you'll just lose to like a green black deck that is uh you know just casting raised deads and and grinding you out in the long game like the the deck that we played against uh, Lord Tupperer on. Yeah, I don't think I'm playing this. I think countering a creature sounds pretty good. I'll I'll have a lot of blue mana on my deck. And I don't want Nurture and Pixie, though. It's kind of nice with, like, the Lock Picker, I guess. Okay. Mm, not that interested in Sterling Keykeeper, but I guess I'll just play it as a 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. This deck could use a Wrath. That would be nice. Picking up that uh, Spree Wrath could be pretty good. Picked up a two drop, a two mana counter. All right, all right, we got. Plus, I do need some creatures if I want Shifting Griff to work, you know. It's good with Form of Posse. You get to give them a mercenary. That is not a big deal. Lone Shark is a, ni is a nice one, yeah. I wouldn't mind picking up some Lone Sharks here. Another town ain't big enough. Oh, hold on. This card seems pretty nice, but I don't think splashing for it is going to be the key. Let's just take this town ain't big enough here. Now if I pick up some Lone Sharks too, I have like block with Lone Shark, bounce, bounce. Oh man, Slick Shot Lock Picker with this town ain't big enough. Block with the Lock Picker, bounce my thing, bounce your thing, replay the Lock Picker, boom, boom. We don't have that many white cards to be honest, but I think pack three should be better for that. I don't really want Stagecoach Security, but I guess I'll just take the white card out of the pack, I think. Creature count? Mm -hmm. Don't matter. It would be nice, that one pack that had uh, Ariette's Lullaby and Steer Clear, it would be nice to wheel one of those. I would be pretty happy if, if, if I picked one of those up. What's our win con? I guess we'll find out. Ooh, Harrier Strix. Oh, actually, Brimstone Roundup is the kind of thing this deck could actually use pretty nicely. Let's... Harrier Strix isn't really looking like what this deck wants to do. Let's take Brimstone Roundup. I don't know that I'm going to play it, but I, I don't think... This deck doesn't care about committing crimes, doesn't care about attacking, so I don't think the Harrier Strix is going to do much for me. I don't think I want Return to Favor either. I'll take Boombox, though. I really can't anticipate uh, playing that card either. I think this pack was the pack with the white removal spells, but I wouldn't be surprised if neither wield. Wouldn't mind one of them. Oh, steer, they both wield. <laughs> uh, actually, that's interesting. Do I want shock or destroy a tapped creature? Probably destroy a tapped creature, gain two. That's my guess. Kill a big creature. Oh, and deep muck Despera desperado wield? Okay. I don't know that I'm going to play it, but it looks like it could be decent here. It's a three mana, two, three, two, four. That's a pretty good blocker. <laughs> All right. We, we, we. I don't know that I even want to put Archive Trap in my deck, but with the Lock Picker and the Desperado, it doesn't sound crazy. Uh, let's, let's bring it in for the moment. For the moment, we'll see. I, I've got a, I've got some ways to make it work. All right, pack three. Oh, one of the best cards in the set, Dust Animus. Two mana, two three flying. But you just plot it, and this when it when you have five lands, you play it as a four five life link. It's a two mana four five life link. That's sick. Maybe we'll, we probably won't, but maybe we could wheel Eroded Canyon. And then there's also a Lone Shark and a Mystical Tether. All right, there's some cards I want here. And Slamming Dust Animus. Tai Joaquin, Perfect Shot. Two mana, two, three. Whenever one of your sources deal exact damage, draw a card. And you can pay two X and tap it to up the amount of damage it deals. Or... Thunder Lasso is a plus one, plus one, and it taps a creature. Um, I'm really not that excited by most of this stuff. Maybe I just take Tai Joaquin, because this, this card seems pretty good when it's in play. I need to get some fixing if I want to play these, but it seems fine. Armored Armadillo. <laughs> Back for more is green, black, yeah. There's the Harrier Strix again, a Sterling Key Keeper. Silver Deputy, five or more untapped lands. It always has flying. Um, maybe I want this to to 
to make my mana a little bit better. It's such a bad card. I think I'd rather just take the Key Keeper and just play a two drop. I don't know. Counter target spell targets you are permanent. You control draw a card. Eh. Oh, I'll just take another Geyser Drake. I think Geyser Drake is awesome. I think it's just, just going to make the cards in my deck work really well. Geyser Drake with this town, it costs one mana. Is Armadillo playable in defensive deck? It's okay. I have a couple two fours, which makes the Armadillos a little bit less good. Oh man, Villainous Wealth is the kind of card this deck, this type of deck could use really nicely. But I think I'm going to slam a Canyon Crab. I don't think I'm playing Brimstone Roundup. I'm honestly not playing Ty Joaquin or Form of Posse either. I picked up no fixing. I don't really see a reason to do that. Canyon Crab, I think, is amazing. So, sorry, Geyser Drake. Outlaw Medic is good, too, but that's great. Oh, Archmage's Charm? Oh, another Slickshot Lock Picker. How many spells do I have again? I have 11 spells. I mean, the Charm is really good. Hmm, this is tough. I think I'm still going to take the Lock Picker because... It's a lot easier to cast. And I've got some good spells to... I guess Essence Capture is not great, but Repulse, Shifting Grift, Failed Fording, Plan the Heist. And it makes this Archive Trap actually pretty good. I can plot... Like, imagine I go turn three plot or turn four plot one of these, and then I just go... Go, go, turn five Archive Trap, untap... Play, play it, flashback, archive trap, 26 cards. I think I actually just take steer clear here. I don't think a third town ain't big enough is probably what I want. And I think I'd rather just take a little bit of interaction. Yeah. <laughs> Despite all this, I don't even know if I want to play shifting grift. I guess, I guess maybe, oh, a second deep muck desperado, okay. All right, well, now I feel like we've got a pretty good plan. Maybe I do want to keep these Key Keepers in then. Oh, I'll take a Mirage Mesa too. I'll play this even in my two-color deck. Oasis Gardener can probably go out. I mean, this, this looks pretty good to me. Oh, I can also copy one of the Deep Muck Desperados. And I have a lot of things that target their stuff. Yeah. All right, all right. And now there's a Divination or a 1-mana Ophora. Did you ever wonder? <laughs> this is our Snapcaster Mage. Also, if they if they uh, if I get the, the Archive Trap for free the first time, it'd be pretty nice. Um, let's take the Strix because I've got now a bunch of Deep Muck Desperados, so I definitely could do that. Oh, wow. I could see all of these cards being good. Um, I think I'll just take Steer Clear, though. Animus is a bomb, yes. I, I do also just have a random awesome card in my deck. All right, well, let's see how this, this lays out. We've got a lot of playables here. Definitely not splashing. Oh, I can plot and copy the Animus, too. Um... <laughs> I could play Seize the Secrets and just cut Plan the Heist, maybe. How many creatures is this? 13. I'm just deciding if I can actually run Shifting Grift. I have a couple, like, creatures I don't care about, like Harrier Strix or Key Keeper. I mean, it's, it is really nice with Shifting Grift to be able to cast the Grift and then go repulse my creature, this town ain't big enough to my creature, flicker my creature. And I need to cut a couple cards, though. I mean, I guess what I could do is I just cut the Grift, cut the Strix, cut the Inventive wing Wingsmith. I already have all these two fours, two threes. And then keep it one of the Divinations. I have a bunch of those. And then I'll keep the Sterling Key Keeper as a way to repeatedly tap. This deck looks this deck looks really funny. And my mana's good. Nine, ten sources. All right. Let's let's go. Let's see if the, let's see if this works. But I, I I think that this uh mill strategy is actually gonna gonna be pretty good. Oh man, if they go if I go like turn four, 
plot the lock picker and then on their turn they like search their library for something i just go fire off archive trap on tap archive trap sounds like game to me anything interesting coming to the to the vintage cube oh yeah yeah there's a bunch of cards so far on my list i have seven cards i'll, I'll keep going over it uh, between drafts here and we haven't even gotten to like the gold section the gold section usually has some pretty good ones too the one thing I, I, I'm a little concerned is I have two copies of the deal two steer clear to attacker or blocker, but I think that's a good way to not get behind. And there's like a bunch of like three ones and stuff like that. So it feels pretty good. Yeah, I mean, look, Terror of the Peaks is a great card. I'm, I'm going to lose to it some amount of the time. So not too, not too concerned. Okay, looking for an opponent here for round one. All right, time for round one. Battling against DeFour. Let's see, I'm on the play. All right. I have 10 blue sources in my deck, so one out of every three cards is, is blue just about. Slightly less, because there's 33 cards. All right, well, I have two cheap removal spells, too, so if I I could maybe have a little bit of time here, though. Against blue-white, these removal spells might not be the best, but as soon as I draw blue and I can play a Geyser Drake, I'll be pretty happy. Any plans to play Constructed in my life? No, never. <laughs> Emergent Haunting. Oh, that's a good card. All right. Well, another cheap removal spell, so that's cool. They play nothing and they get to flip that, but that I at least have some ways to kill. <laughs> All right, planes go. It's okay. Fierce Retribution can kill it. Ariette's Lullaby can kill it. Yeah, I mean, this isn't an ideal start, but I can kill it probably the first couple things that attack me. Destroy target attacking creature. Boom. Prompt a counter spell or a bounce spell or something. All right, counter unless I pay two. No, I can't pay two. Hopefully this is something that dies to steer clear if they play another card this turn. Duelist of the Mind does not. Um, land. Unfortunately, this is a sorcery, so I think I'm just going to play the Drake. And I'll probably block Nathan here. And then try to use steer clear to finish finish him off. We'll see what uh, they've got. Geyser Drake is a great card. If I can draw more blue, I'll be happy. And then on my next turn, if I draw a land, I can go Desperado plus... All right, I'll block here. Uh, I'm going to stop and I'm gonna hold down Control, I guess. And then after damage, steer clear on the, on Mr. Stoyer. And if they've got a counterspell or something, then so so be it. All right. That was a pretty good exchange. I, tra I traded a fairly bad card for a fairly good card. And then lands are great draws here. Because if I draw a land, I can play Lullaby, Killing the Haunting, and then... Something else. 2-4 flying. I don't care about that at all. We really dislike Steer Clear? No, I just... In a blue-white mirror, it's going to be one of your worst cards. Like, I'm playing two in the deck because I think they're good. Uh, but... Okay. And bounce the gold pan. Sure, that was like a lot of stuff to do. Not very much. All right. I'm just going to start the mill then. I'm going to play the Drake... Mill you for three. And I've got block block. I, I can't block the three three. I guess I can't block the nurturing pixie either with gold pan, but then Ariette's lullaby is gonna be nice. And this town ain't big enough isn't bad. Alright, I'll take three. Or six actually. But then next turn I can play a Drake as well. Also, if I draw a land, actually, it could be kind of nice here. What's your last card? Uh, oh four. <laughs> sure i guess it can get pumped for for some stuff all right so land 
Lullaby on the Haunting. Milieu. This Deep Milk Desperado is actually going pretty hard. And then next turn I can play Drake, or this turn I can play Drake and have, if I want, Mill. 23 cards. Surveil one. Wait. That's not the right order to play that. You want to let this thing resolve. You're going to keep a good card on top and then it gets milled. <laughs> or you're going to mill a bad card. That was a, certainly an error. I mean, it's day one of the set, obviously, but... <laughs> And then play Drake. And then pass. And this has Ward 1. I do have to worry about that. But I feel like I've got some uh, some good plays I can make here. This town ain't big enough. Bouncing my own thing isn't a huge deal. I'll pro What I'll probably do this turn <coughs> is like... Hmm. I'll probably just double block Nurturing Pixie, block Inventive Gwynsmith, and then take four down to six, and then next turn just cast this town ain't big enough to bounce two of their creatures. Oh, okay. Oh, I see, and then... So you're attacking with just Armadillo, then. Uh, all right. Plans on going to RC Dallas now. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go to a... A regional champs again in my life most likely <laughs> i went to the one in denver because i don't have to fly to it but i don't i wouldn't fly to one of those getaway glamour destroy target creature if no other creature has greater power i see and they just paying it for three so let's go bounce the drake bounce the wingsmith mill you for three. Oh, there's another nathan huh and then now they don't have any attacks? Nice. Oh, I guess they can move the gold pan back and attack for three. Sure, I go to seven. All right. If I can draw an archive trap, I just win. So that'd be nice. A lock pick would be nice too. Uh, how about an island? Pass the turn. I'm basically in need of drawing a couple spells here. If I draw like two more spells, I'll, I'll be in great shape. Draw three, okay. That's pretty risky against the mill plan and now you can't pump the armadillo. But you do get a, access to a bunch more spells, so it's not too bad. All right, well, I'll double block here. If you got a trick, you got a trick. No trick. And then play the 2-4 at the very least, if not something else. Oh, no plays. Oh, lock picker. Um, let's see. If I play this for three, and then this costs two. Yeah, so let's go. Let's just cast the lock picker. Oh, could I have a mana leak? That's fine. This town ain't big enough. Play a land, play this town ain't big enough to target the lock picker and the armadillo. So I get mana leaked here, but so be it. Nope, and then I get the lock pick back and I'm just not going to attack here. I don't know. I could have some, a flash creature or something. I, I'm not winning via damage, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, down, down to nine cards. Like, And then the lock pick can can go ahead and, and cast Ariat's Lullaby or Fierce Retribution, which is pretty nice. This doesn't have Vigilance or anything. Yeah, I take three. I feel pretty good about this, actually. I need like one more spell. Yeah, these things don't do too much. Yeah, that's not nothing, I guess. Archive Trap would make it pretty easy. Mm, essence Capture. All right, I mean, if he draws another creature, it's pretty good. Let's get Lullaby. Lullaby the Holy Cow, mill you for three, down to five cards. I go up to six and I have a flyer. <clears throat> I've got 
I've got some chumps here. Really hope that DeFour draws a creature to play. Because then this tri this will trigger the Deep Muck Desperado. So I really need them to draw a creature. As is... <clears throat> Armadillo gets pretty pretty big here. I'm going to have to chump with the, the Slick Shot Lock Picker. Need another, just need like one more piece of action here. Or it's possible I could win with just Essence Capture. So him playing a creature would also be, do it because he'd get milled down to one and then I'd just have to survive two turns. Any targeting spell winning is pretty nice. Another, uh, another copy of this town ain't big enough would be sick. Armadillo. So it can pump twice to plus X plus O or X is its toughness. It can pay eight. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is double block with the lock picker and the drake. Because the armadillo is represents a lot of damage. And this means in order to kill both my creatures, just to completely tap out. Yep, 4-4. Four, four. Yep, 8-8. Eight, eight. All right. I think you should have just put the gold pan on it because I don't think that was a, a good one. All right. Uh, if he draws a creature, I win. <laughs> Otherwise, I lose. Or unless I draw a spell. All right. And this isn't lethal, so... Oh. All right. What a beating. All right. Archive trap or bust, I guess. And then he has the creature now, but... <laughs> All right, let's go Archive Trap. Hmm. Unfortunately, this isn't going to do it because of this thing. <laughs> Otherwise, this actually could. Yeah. Had to have the Mystical Tether. Damn. I have enough lands that this could just be a 4-5. All right, let's just cast it as a 4-5 lifelink. Maybe my opponent messes up with the Key Keeper. Who knows? They, they've made some other plays this game that would make it not a complete surprise if they did. All right. Yeah, close game. Close game for being stuck on some planes in the early game, though that didn't end up mattering that much. It was mostly that I just needed to draw one more targeted spell. But I like what was going on. So let's try that again, shall we? Keykeeper for Mythic Common. That's the tapper, the two-mana tapper? <laughs> I don't know if it's in like the top 20 commons, but I mean, there's some decks where it's going to be good, but all right. Well, let's try that again, shall we? All right. Time for round two. Ooh, read. Oh, archive traps going to be great against read. Oh, so is a uh, dust animus. <laughs> let's keep this. Of course, he's Liliana. That's how you can tell it's the real read. See, this is a hand where if I drew the blue-white desert, I'd wait on it. I think my turns two and three are just going to be plotting things and not doing anything. But we'll see. It depends. If he plays a creature I really want a Fierce Retribution on two, then I'll do that. Oh. Yeah, that card's pretty good. Oh, I'll just play the crab. And then I can start looting after I'm plotting the next few turns. I like that. Stubborn Burrow Fiend is pretty good. Saddle, mill two, and it gets big. Just like the self mill plus the growing, and it's a two mana two two. Like it just has a lot of pretty cool uh, upsides here. Into vault plunder, and presumably saddle the thing. If you're in green black, that's kind of what you're doing. Oh man, it's going to really help with my mill plan, isn't it? Milled two creatures. Look at that. What a strong card. Uh, let's go. Plot the lock picker, pass, loot. This town ain't big enough. <clears throat> I mean, I feel pretty good about this. Like, even if Reed plays a creature to, to crew this, if he doesn't hit a, a creature, it, can, it can't get past the crab. If he does, I can still block the vault plunder. So yeah, I take five. I mean, that's obviously a beating. But then next turn, I'm going to plot the the Dust Animus and Pass and Fierce Retribution, the Burrow Fiend. I do feel like my crab's living on borrowed time here, though. 
And if he if he uh, saddles the Burrow Fiend like two or three times this game, then he doesn't know that I'm a mill deck. It, it's going to be nice if I, once I get to do that. And then the Dust Animus coming to play on six is nice too. What is this? A one, two, goes and finds a desert. And then you play a desert. I get pinged. Oh, wow. This card's good. Mills, a creature, so it's a 5-5. Five, five. Is there any point in attacking with the Vault Plunder? Not really. All right. Take five. Yeah, Archive Trap would have been funny there. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Uh, let's plot the Dust Animus. <clears throat> and I get to loot and discard a planes. All right. I actually feel like we've got the setup here. We've got Archive Trap into Lock Picker. We're, we're going to just turn five. Turn, turn five. I'm going to go land five. Dust Animus as a four five. He's got to deal with it. Fierce Retribution is going to take down the Burrow Fiend here. And then I'm going to go, say, pass. Mill for 13. Lock Picker, Mill for 13. So unless Reed can kill me over these next two turns through Destroy an Attacking Creature and a 4-5 Flying Lifelink, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. <laughs> is he going to mill himself? That's so funny. Yeah? I mean, given what he's seen, it makes sense. But, oh, this is great. This is great. If he tutors here, then then I get to just like demolish him. Crew. I mean, he's at twenty one cards already. Nineteen cards. I'm I'm getting pretty close to just getting him without doing anything with just one archive trap. And as things currently stand, I can block the vault plunder and take three. Okay, um, I guess I'll block the green blade, destroy the burrow fiend here, or attempt to. If he's got a way to save that, yeah, that could have been bad. Now I feel pretty good about things. He, he knows that the dust animus is coming down too. All right, play that, play my land, play dust animus. <clears throat> Pass the turn, loot, and I guess I'll discard steer clear. And now I've got double trap ready to go. I just need to live through this turn. If he kills Dust Animus and I block, I take six. The other thing is if he really makes things hard for me, like if he has a bunch of pump spells, then I can uh, cast my town in big enough and failed fording. I don't really want to bounce my dust animus though. I don't think that's a really good way to, to do it. I, I wasn't going to chump that turn even if he had snakeskin veil, was my calculation, which is why I cast the fierce retribution post blocks. What does this do? Target opponent sacks their creatures and discards half their cards in hand, round it up. So I guess I sack. If he has a way to kill the dust animus, do I die? No, I don't even die. All right trap you I'm just gonna do it now because that way I only have to discard one card do, do, do. mill sacrifice a creature sack can canyon crab I guess failed fording can go <laughs> and then if he can kill the dust animus now I take nine going to, to one and then I lock picker archive trap him. <laughs> oh yeah, that is the plan. <laughs> let's let's do it. Reed has two cards in hand. It's gonna be pretty hard to for him to to win this game. I think. I mean, definitely there's a combination of cards that do it. I would imagine, but can't be can't be very many. block the the green blade <clears throat> all right I go to nine and then he's maybe he has a way to exile a card out of my graveyard oh lock picker <laughs> uh, archive trap 
entrap you. <laughs> that was what I would call entrapment. <laughs> uh, and there we go. Kaboom, with a little skull and everything. All right, well, getting to mill readout was it certainly makes up for losing round one. Though, yeah, see, games like that don't make me want the tapper. Games like round one make me want the tapper. But yeah, that was pretty good. Reed went from probably, you know, looking like a, pretty much a lock to definitely not. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Archive Trap really delivered there. And uh, <laughs> I got to say, that was a satisfying win. All right, time for round three. A little 2 1 opponent goes first. All right. I will keep this hand. <laughs> Let's see. So I guess I'm just going to go key keeper into plotting the lock picker. Oh, wow. That's. <laughs> Well, you get all that Western Western look. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I've got to play this land. I know I've got two of the Desperados, but this way I can go Key Keeper into Lock Picker. I'd have to be pretty desperate not to plot the Lock Picker, or I guess like in a situation where I can just play it and cast a spell, I suppose. Grixis. Grixis action here. Oh, no plays. Interesting. Um, let's attack. Let's just plot the lock picker. I, I don't think I'm going to deal lethal damage very often in this draft, so I think keeping a lock picker there is good. Man, double this town in big enough with the lock picker. Ooh, they get to surveil. They didn't have any other plays. All right, let's just play the key keeper again. Pass. I have so many ways to pick locks. <laughs> Let's see. I could flash back my thing like five times. 2-2 two, two flying flash. All right. Yeah, land. Honestly, I'm just going to pass and tap that into Assassin. I don't think I have a whole lot I can do that's relevant. It's okay. I'm playing against like a Grixis deck. They had to use a failed fording or chose to use a failed fording kind of for like medium value, let's just tap this thing. Pass, draw, basically, oh, seize the secrets, that's perfect. That is that is gonna break this game wide open. Um, honestly, 18, I think I'm just gonna seize the secrets again. And Because I have so many ways to get this lock picker back. Discard. I guess I'll discard a planes. I don't love discarding to hand size, but I feel like I've got enough action going on here. And if they kill the lock picker, I've got a second one, so I'm not too worried. All right. So I've got some 2 2 flyers, but I have a shock. I have a fierce retribution. I have like everything. Oh, and a repulse too. Repulsive. Past the turn, shields are up. This deck's awesome. This is my favorite deck I've drafted so far. The blue black deck was fun. Oh man, and they're just like playing these like big creatures. It's just going to be so easy to to really just use these bounce spells to just massive value here. Um, steer clear, kill one. Uh, eh. Let's just let's just kill these things. Just take no damage. I've got so many cards I can do. Oh, there we go. Then play the Deep Muck Desperado and pass the turn. Kind of have it all locked up here. Let's just make sure we don't lose Deep Muck, De Deep Muck Desperado to something. <laughs> how, how how like no no number of overzealous muscles can 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 beat this. Like this is just. This is just silly. Like, I'm going to go block. This town ain't big enough. Bounce the lock picker. Bounce overzealous muscle. Mill you for three. Lock picker comes back. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess... Here's where having one more land would have been nice. Let's, 
let's actually just repulse the overzealous muscle because if I draw a land here, it would be would be good. All right. Um, you know what? I'll, I know all the cards in their hand. I'm just going to plot this and pass and give them one turn where they can hit me for four with the Rope Master or five even. That's fine. And the Deep Muck Desperado is like exposed. But next turn I get to go Geyser Drake and just have a ton of uh, bounce and protection up. Blink, bounce, bounce. <laughs> and I have like a bunch of spells I can flash back. Yeah, this, this is a gassy deck. All right, there's my land. Uh, let's just go Drake. Let's just chill. Well, if I can draft decks like this, this is going to be awesome. Oh, counterspell. Nice. All right. I guess I'll pass the turn. Here I might... I guess I have to do something here. Let's go tap the Rope Master. Mill for three. They're at 16 cards. And then I'll bounce the Overzealous Muscle with Failed Fording. Sadly, I don't get another mill here. I do get a surveil though. Dust animus, yeah, I'm not gonna complain about that. Wow, you can also just cast this and it's just a four or five lifelink late in the game. This card is obscene. All right, I don't even know why. I could have just not auto tapped it. I could just cast it. <laughs> and do I wanna play uh, any of my bounce spells? Mm. No, but let's go destroy a tap creature, mill you for three. Dust Animus is an A+, plus, not even an A. And I even gained two life. And then now I've got Getaway Glamour and Town ain't big enough to protect my bomb creatures if I need to. I could even take five off the muscle, but actually I'll... Rooftop Assassin, yep. Yeah. Do, do, do. I mean, this this game is like mega over. Warner surprise, get back that. All right, we'll tap the overzealous muscle. Mill you for three. Down to nine cards. Yeah, I mean, I can mill for three on my turn, three on their turn, then three on my turn. And it's just not going to be close here. Uh, sure, we'll lock pick. This town ain't big enough. <laughs> bounce the lock picker, bounce the overzealous muscle. Boom, boom. Play a land, plot the lock pick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I might as well attack. Why not? I'll gain more life by attacking. I mean, this is. This deck is fun. This, is, this deck, I might have to play this one a little bit. A little bit more than uh, than than five. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, they're they're down to six cards, five cards in deck, and I've got still two bounce spells and a lock picker ready to roll. I can't imagine this is the most fun game for my opponent. They they basically spent the whole game casting their five mana five fours as as I bounce them every single turn of the game. But you know, this is. We drafted what we drafted. We get to play it. <laughs> and land lockpick. <laughs> Even killing the Desperado wouldn't really have done it here. Three lanes long and four lanes wide. 65 tons of American pride. Desperado. <laughs> uh, let's get repulse. And then repulse this. <laughs> Oh, Mana Drain! They got to play the Mana Drain! That's really cool. I mean, obviously, this is more of a like, hey, look, I got a Mana Drain than anything else, but I like it. <laughs> that was not a mean nice, by the way. That was a... Cool, you have a Mana Drain nice, just to be clear. I hope my opponent doesn't take it that way. All right. 2-1, <laughs> though, I do think... Uh... I do think I actually, I think I actually was wrong, and I do want uh, the other Sterling Keykeeper in. 
Do I want to cut a land? Right, I've never drawn Shepherd. Oh, Shepherd would be really easy in some of these games. Um, wow, this deck's so good. How can I cut anything? I mean, maybe I cut Essence Capture, but I have all this balance. That doesn't seem right to do that. Maybe I cut one of the Steer Clears. No, actually, I I feel like I should just have the, the, the fast cards in my deck. Like, this deck has so much good late game stuff. I don't know. The Archive Trap plan has been good. I actually want to draw Archive Trap pretty much every game. Let's see what our next round looks like. All right, time for round four. Yeah, 2 1, I think. Okay, opponent goes first. Looks good to me. Two early removals and a Dust Animus. What is happening? My opponent Mulligan three times already? That fast? Okay. Who knows? That is weird. It looked like, yeah, they mulligan three times, all right. But like instantly. Uh, let's just make a Mirage Mesa on white. Well, my hand is great because I'm going to plot Animus on turns two and then plot N3, basically. Because then this is going to come into play as a Dust Animus on turn five. So I feel like I would be in great shape even if they hadn't molded four, but obviously now they've molded four and then had to play this to put a land on top. Like there's not gonna be a not gonna be an easy game for them. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. Oh, that's pretty good. Get a card back. You sack that to draw two. It's two oh repulse. All right, let's just go the Drake. I don't need to play the plot the bandit yet because I'm gonna wait till turn five. I, it could be later than turn five if I don't draw a land. I guess. Ooh, and they get a treasure. Yeah, they're putting up a reasonable fight. Um, I will take it. I have steer clear to kill that thing at a pretty significant discount. Another Drake. Let's go Drake and leave up Repulse. And hit. The reason I want to leave up Repulse is I really want to... Oh, wow. Path to Exile. Okay. I guess I don't get to leave up Repulse. Huh. Well, now I know I can get the Dust Animus into play here. I'll probably have to trade off here. I don't really think I need to... Pathing my Drake when there's a Dust Animus plotted is pretty wild. I don't... I can't say I get it. Um... Yeah, let's play it, and then let's plot this thing, and then I'll play it next turn. And I have repulse to protect my dust animus. Yeah, that was a that was a, <laughs> that was a day one of the set kind of play, is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> unless you have unless they have some other plan. Obviously, they could have another plan, and that's fine. So they get to get back mine raider. That's pretty cool. The dust raider has to have five lands. That are untapped. What, what am I missing? Do I want to use Repulse? I don't even really want to. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it's a new card, but <laughs> when you think you're missing something, reading the card is like a really good place to start. <laughs> All right, pass, and then now, and this is basically a lock. We have two. Two dust animuses. We have a bunch of removal. We have repulse. We have lock picker if I need to. And granted, my opponent molded four and had a pretty good draw. Like their deck, their deck looks pretty sweet. Splashing path in their like red black deck with some good outlaw stuff. Trick shot. All right. Repulse. And I'll take six. Yeah, I am gonna win this game with damage most likely. Unfortunately, I can't uh, bandit and copy Dust Animus for full full value. But let's go plot the bandit, lock picker on repulse and <laughs> repulse the lock picker. <laughs> See, here's the thing. <laughs> Might as well. I, I'll I'll take my free my free card. 
I'm at 16. What are they going to do? Like, they're going to attack me. I'm going to steer clear on the Mine Raider. Against Black, you should kill their weaker creature. These are exactly the same, except I'd much rather them raise dead that thing than the Contractor. Um, I'm going to attack first, because if they kill Dust Animus... Oh, I guess this just comes in as a 2-2 two -two if I miss. All right. Copy this and definitely plot this in case they have a wrath or something. I'm not going to kill their contractor. Things are getting dusty in here. All right, well, this is maybe the one game of this draft that I win with damage. Dust Animus is the card, right? Like if I draw this one, yeehaw. <laughs> this looks like a gunslinger too. Now I have three removal spells in hand and a lock picker just chilling. No, no uh, villainous wealth. Well, they put up a great fight for uh, mulling to four. I will say that. I, want, I think it could have been a pretty good battle if they had three more cards in their hand. All right. Nice little 3-1 start. Uh, we have not recorded the Rare and Mythic review now. Let's get into another round here. All right, battling against, oh, a Numot. Oh, I want to archive trap out Numot. That would be nice. I'm on the draw. All right, I like this hand on the draw. I have an early removal spell, a divination, a lock picker, and then shepherd to get back lock picker. Oof. That's what I'm talking about. All right, blue red. The good thing about playing against blue red is, uh, oh, I should have played my island actually because of essence capture. Uh, the good thing about playing blue-red is they, pro or, or multicolors, they probably goes through a lot of the deck himself. Oh, what a draw on turn two. Let's plot that bad boy right on up. And I, if I if I can, I will like to uh, save my Shepherd of the Clouds to get back Dust Animus. Intrepid Stable Master. It's a very stable master over there. Uh, let's just go ahead and plot this thing. Because next turn, I can go Lullaby into Seize the Secrets is a pretty nice little play. Uh, MNs, we use Draftmancer. It's a great program, and we all support the, the dev behind it. It's a, really cool, it's a really cool one. Okay, this looks like a desert deck. I'm using my keen detective skills because Numont has three deserts in play by turn four. I mean, assuming this thing attacks or taps for mana, it'll do one of the two. I can go Lullaby Seas, and that looks pretty good. All right. Yeah, we're going to definitely do that. Lullaby. Sing me a song. Land. Draw two. Oh, there's the archive trap. <laughs> oh, look at this. Turn five. Land. Dust Animus. Say go. Trap, trap. Boom. That's it. Puts them to three cards in deck, two cards in deck, but this looks pretty good. Does this thing have Vigilance? Yeah, so I can't lullaby it, dang. I'm at 18. So I take forward out of 14. I mean, the worst case is he has been at a 14, plays like a four power creature. I play Dust Animus. He then has a way to, oh, he gets to saddle it. Oh, he doesn't want to saddle it because of the thing I've got. All right, land. Dust Animus. I guess I pass. Yeah. I, the thing is, I don't really have a good play. Let's see, four, eight. So he's 29 cards in deck. Hmm. The Archive Trap thing isn't lethal, so I kind of want to play Crab and Lock Picker. Let's see. I basically the, the archive because the archive trap thing isn't lethal. I'm I'm a little scared here. I think I'm gonna go canyon crab, and I think I plot the lock picker still and pass the turn. If he can't kill the Dust Animus, I, I, I feel like I'm in great shape. Even if he attacks for five or something, I don't know. 
The problem is I don't want to spend two turns trapping him if it's not going to kill him. Like I, I might as well wait a few turns, get on the board. Plus, if he play, if he shuffles, if he has a, a search, there's not that many search cards in the deck, but if he has one, then that would be pretty sick too. And at least the crab can block one of these four fours. Yep, that's kind of what I was worried about. Yeah, I guess I'll take five. I'm at nine. Land Essence Capture would have been nice. Um, let's go. He's got 28 cards, 27. Yeah, let's go Shepherd. Get back Dust Animus. Play a lock picker and uh, just not do anything. I, I think I'll wait on the other lock picker here. Yes, if I draw any of the bounce spells, then I think I'll be fine. A land next turn is also not terrible because I can play Dust Animus as a 4 or 5. We're at now, now this turn sequence, if he doesn't have a good thing this turn, then I think I can go trap, trap on the next two turns. So I have to go pass, draws to 26, trap. All right, well, I'm going to block, block, and I guess I'll block with the crab too, just to not take trample damage. If he's got a trick, he's got a trick. I, I'm not going to concern myself about that quick draw. Okay, so he kills those two. All right, don't play another thing. Oh, and I drew a land, perfect. Now I just cast Dust Animus. And then now, now I'm fine, because now I have Essence Capture and Archive Trap up, and the Double Trap should be good enough. Especially since the Double Trap's enough cards-wise, and then if he plays something that would be lethal, I could also Essence Capture it if I need to. Okay. Make the weirdest looking block in history. <laughs> Trap you. Whoop. Bum -ba -da -da. <laughs> He's highlighting over to Lockpicker right now. Oh, yeah, he is. All right. Draw. Lockpick. <laughs> Do, do, do. Archive trap. Trap you. <laughs> All right. Here, I'll make a red a red desert. Why not? <laughs> oh, I get to loot too. Nice. <laughs> I get to keep this town ain't big enough, just in case. Kaboom! And that is another archive trap. They've all fallen to the archive trap. <laughs> Read Numat. No one's safe. Oh, yeah, that was good. Look, that was great for both of our YouTube videos, to be honest. Who doesn't want to see that? Everyone loved that. Okay, maybe Kenji didn't love the fact that I tra double-trapped him out, but I sure did. All right. Welcome to the next round here. We're like four and one, three and one. I don't know. Opponent goes first. All right. I like this well enough. No two that really does anything, but I get to go... Uh, plot on the the lockpick. Oh, Visage Bandit is really nice because now I get to copy the Deep Muck Desperado. They hit on Frontier Seeker. They hit a Plains. All right, they found a Frontier. Uh, I feel a little behind. I might have to just fire off a Bounce spell if they play something this turn. Mine Raider. Is this an Outlaw? This is not an Outlaw. Uh, what's mine is mine. Mm. Yeah, let's just not get too far behind. Oh, crab is nice. All right. Land. Just play the Desperado. Desperado. So far, this format has seemed awesome. I mean, I know it's early. You got to take it with a grain of salt. Anyone who's like too confident one way or the other in the first five drafts of the format is kind of overrepresenting uh, 
what the reality to some degree. Like, I don't think you can get that much information. But so far, I've drafted Red Blue Double Spells, Blue Black Crimes, and Blue White Mill. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving that. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Um, let's go. Let's just make another Desperado here while the, while the way is clear. If they attack with Mind Raider next turn, I'm going to take it. Like, I will just take a take a hit for three here, not risk any Desperados, and then I go just cast Lock Picker and Failed Fording, Bouncer Thing, Mill for Six, Surveil, that sort of thing. Outlaws Merriman? Whoa, what does this one do? Bidding your upkeep, you get a random one too? All right. I think we're going to beat this card pretty easily, to be honest. Um, Non-land permanent? Yeah, let's do this. Bounce that, mill you for six. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Surveil? Uh, nah. I, I just want cards that trigger the Deep Muck Desperados at this point. If they're going to play Outlaws Merriment again next turn, I am happy as a clam, happy as a crab, a homerid. A homerid mercenary shapeshifter rogue. It's got some types. It's got some good types here. Oh, they killed a Desperado. But they have to wait a turn on the Merriment. Yeah, the, the cost on this is no joke. Oh. Value for three. And then play Canyon Crab. And then pass the turn. And probably going to go bounce this. <laughs> bounce my lock picker. Bounce your Merriment. <laughs> if I had the two Desperados and play the game, it would be over, over. But as is, it's still, I think, pretty over. They're going to need some pretty good stuff to get out of this. If they're trying to kill my Desperado, that's not going to work either. Oh, they actually killed the wrong one, I think. Well, so killing the clone means that if you then try to kill this and I bounce it, oh, I don't care about that. I don't have a Desperado anymore, but then I have a clone. and Maybe that's more powerful. I don't know. This mills for three whenever I commit a crime, but it only triggers once a turn. It doesn't go like super hard. Are they really not going to play the Outlaw's Merriment again? Kind of surprised. Requisition raid. Uh, okay. What is? Wait, wait, what does that do for you? Doesn't really open the door to attacks. Unless their last card is a trick. But if it is, then my uh, this town ain't big enough is going to do some really good work. Yeah, this is kind of strange. I mean, Outlaw's Merriment is a is a good card. You kind of want to have that one in play. But I guess you wanted to play the duel. They wanted to play the duelist first. Okay, I'll block with the crab. Okay. Thunder Sawbow. Ah. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, partner. This town ain't big enough. I'll bounce the duelist. Oh, nice. Oh, what was that? Is that a ride down? Oh, collective defiance, huh? Oh, and Shepard. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, they did kill the other one. Anyways. Did I bounce the wrong thing? No, I don't think I did. Um, Let's go... This, get back Desperado. I guess I'll play my land, because I, maybe I want to pump the crab. And... Oh, wow, I can clone the Shepherd and get back Geyser Drake, or I could just clone the Desperado. They're at 13 cards. I guess we'll see. I might have to... <laughs> Maybe I'll clone the Lock Picker, and then this town ain't big enough. Yeah, that could be nice. All right, Outlaw's Merriment. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I mean, any spell is just like almost ends the game right now. So here, let's just get Desperado out. And I could clone the Desperado, but I don't think that's good. I think I'm actually going to plot the clone. Oh, this is Vigilance. I could have attacked. Eh, I don't really care. Nug the crab for one. <laughs> the Mind Raider can't attack unless the crab gets nugged. Does that reach or anything? There's haste. 
Do they all have haste? Oh, they all have haste. And then next turn, if I draw a targeting spell, maybe I copy the Desperado. Otherwise, I can go Bandit, copy Lockpicker, get Town ain't big enough, bounce the Bandit, bounce one of their things, probably the Outlaw's Merriment, and then clone like the Desperado or something. Mm, I'll just take four, I think. I'm at 13. Did I duelist? Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a lot of... Let's just go Bandit. Now we can just copy the uh, the Crab land. And let's go... Do you want to do this now? <laughs> um, probably... Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, let's go Getaway Glamour for both. So target a non-token creature. Oh wait, hold on. I, I want to do this on my own end step, actually. I'm not even bothering attacking with Shepard. It's all about sending a message. All right, to my end of turn. All right, in response to this, so I want to flicker the lock picker and then I want to kill the Mine Raider because nothing's bigger, right? And then I get to mill them for six. And I, I want to do this like this because I want the Lock Picker to come back on their turn so that I get to cast this town ain't big enough on their turn. <laughs> and uh, and I didn't want to mill with Crab. They get that. I'm at 13. And then... And then on the end of their turn, the lock picker is going to come back and it, and I can cast Getaway Glamour or Town Ain't Big Enough. And I get to mill for 12. <laughs> I mean, if they cast some kind of overrun effect, I guess I could lose. But maybe, uh, you know, uh, that's not going to do it. <laughs> maybe it was, I, I don't know, I kind of like the the plan here. I mean, I'm going to make some blocks here for sure. Uh, I'll just block with the shepherd, I guess. Mm -hmm. Take four. They get to get another counter. And this comes back and then targets uh, probably the getaway glamour. <laughs> and then getaway glamour. On the lock picker. Oh, actually, I was supposed to. Oh, because that doesn't commit a crime. Eh, whatever. I was supposed to do it the other way. We'll still get to commit a crime here. Okay. So let's. Ha this comes back. <laughs> I was supposed to pay an additional two. Hold on, hold on. Uh, discard this. Can I stop? Okay, there we go. Whew. And then I'll bounce the lock picker and I guess the three one token. And then these are both. All right. We finally got there. I, I put a little more, a few more triggers in the stack than I needed to, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> what in tarnation? All right. Then lock picker comes back just in case. I even had another steer clear if I needed to. And boom, we milled them out once again. <laughs> you love to see it, honestly. Where are we at with this deck? Five and one. No, we're just we're just continuing. This deck is is too fun. I'm gonna to try to play it out. If if this if it takes too long to get a match, I might I might bail. But I'm I'm enjoying this this one way too much to to stop now. Someone's gonna thought seize my trap or homerid. Yeah, so then I'll have to cast one of my two lock pickers to bring it back the trap, or my shepherd to bring back the homerid, or my second homerid. So yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Mill is so back. Uh, the reason I went into this deck was mainly that, like, I got the Desperado super late, the first one, and then I wanted the second one a lot more, and I got the Archive Trap mid-pack, but I was like, you know, Archive Trap Lockpicker actually sounds kind of legit. So, it's worked out even better than I expected it. I mean, if you ever draw Lockpicker Archive Trap, you have, like, a turn six win most of the time. Turn five, boom, boom. Oh, looks like the, the rematch. <laughs> yeah, this is why sometimes you stop with a good record. 
I also just have Dust Animus for just, you know, the free victories. Mostly what Dust Animus has done is distract my opponents long enough so I could lockpick with them to death. And Shepard can bring back Animus. I mean, this all just does the thing I need to do. This is, this is quite the deck, I will say that. The question here, do I play the Lonely Arroyo? I think in general you should default to playing the Deserts as opposed to, to trying to save them for crime stuff. It's just so bad if you ever run into a spot. Now here, so let, what am I going to do? Turn two this, turn three. This is this one's close. I'll try not playing it, I guess. Because if you, if I draw, yeah, now it's actually worked out. Yeah, you definitely plot the Animus. You almost never want to cast it or cast it on turn seven. Casting this on turn two or three would be like, some weird situation where you're just gonna like you have a bunch of fight cards in your hand and you have no other plays and they're beating you down or something but all right i mean i have five lands so now i can save this from my home red. yeah that was a borderline one one less land and i wouldn't have done it oh prickly pear is pretty good i i, I kind of want to draw oh that is good so now i can go plot the lock picker pass the turn and then Lullaby probably just killed a prickly pair, which isn't like the biggest value card. If this is the game, the turn where if uh, Veggie plays Outlaws Merriment, then I could be in a bit of trouble. All right, a three three is not too bad. Especially oh, steer clear. What a what a good draw. Um, the funny thing is, I don't want to actually play Lullaby now. Well. I guess I can. I can just lullaby the prickly pear. This turns to a 4-4. If they don't attack with it, then that's not a big deal. And then, because then I can lock picker it back. And here, actually, at this point, I think it's more important to just play that, to play my land here. And do I want to deal two to one of their things? It doesn't sound like amazing, but... I think killing the pixie is probably fine. <clears throat> I do take the same amount of damage, I guess. <laughs> all right, I go to 10. But this is the turn where all my all my forces emerge, because now I go Dust Animus, 4, 5, Lock Picker, get the Lullaby, Lullaby the Townsfolk. And then play a Geyser Drake. And then I have Shepard to pick the Animus back up if it dies. I mean, this is just classic blue-white control. Look, we went we went from them having three creatures or four creatures and me having none to now me having three and they have a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> and my three are good. I have a 4-5 lifelink and a 2-3 flyer. And just an idiot 2-3 on the ground. But Shepard looking really nice right now. Doesn't stop exile stuff. Yeah, so that's going to exile the Animus. Mm -hmm. But what else are they going to do? Maybe they can cast... Oh, they have the deal three now, the deal two plus one per spell you've played. And then I think I... Pr it's not good value, but I'll probably shepherd back the Geyser Drake if they killed... Oh, they killed the lock picker. They're scared of all the stuff. And now it's going to work out way worse because I'm going to play shepherd and get back the lock picker. <laughs> That's great. All right, let's hit with the Drake. We are actually playing a game where I could win via damage now, so I, I'm going to attack, take that opportunity to attack here. Oh, Shepard can't block. They got me for two. Okay, let's go Crabarino. Plot. Swing for six. I mean, I'm just going to win with my... Large creatures. Keeping this land in hand, because next turn I might just plot the lock picker, lock picker and loot off the Canyon Crab. And look, we'll get you a deck that can do both. This this is just blue-white control. I just cast removal spell, removal spell, dust animus, lock picker, another removal spell, shepherd, bring back lock picker. Like, I just cast a bunch of value cards, and they had a solid curve. I mean, they had pixie into prickly pear, and... Uh, into Vengeful Townsfolk with two removal spells. That's like a totally fine thing to do. All right, I'll block one. Lockpicker is just a great card. I'm uh, pretty happy about that one. Deadeye Duelist. 
All right. And getaway glamour. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Eleven. Let's go. I'm at nine. Let's bash. Pump the crab. Pump the crab. They go to one or three, sorry. Play a land. Lock picker. Oh, I guess I actually could have just steer cleared. Huh. Now discard a land. I could have cast lock picker on steer clear before attacking, given that I was going to make that attack. Yeah, that was probably better. Not that I'm particularly concerned here. I even have a getaway glamour to to flicker something. I'm at nine. I don't really think they're going to be able to burn me out very easily here. And if they have a wrath, then I go getaway glamour on the shepherd. It comes back end of turn and picks back up probably the lock picker because then it, get, get, it uses getaway glamour on the shepherd again and then gets back something else. So yeah. And I have another lock picker in hand. Yeah, this deck is great. Okay. This town ain't big enough. <clears throat> oh, it will exile Sponzi, the, the spell, but, you know, I just have lots of spells. Okay, I go to eight. I mean, I could have gone for lethal here, but this felt like it was fine. I'm not even going to plot that. Uh, <laughs> all right, Deep Muck Desperado, you're good, but this isn't the game for you. Tai Joaquin, the perfect shot. All right. <clears throat> well, now that I'm, now that I'm six one, I gotta go for the last one, right? It's it's kind of mandatory. All right. I feel like I feel like I gotta go for a seven one, even though, uh, even though you know there's not as many opponents as I would like. Maybe we'll maybe we'll find someone to battle because. This deck is awesome. I can't wait to take a look at this deck after. I have some good cards on the sideboard too. This this deck kind of checks all the boxes for me. And if this format is this, if this is the sort of thing you can do in this format, then I am stoked. I mean, this is like it's got like tons of little tricksy things. It's got spells. You're replaying them. It's got mill. It's got a lot of cool modal stuff. Like I, I'm into it. I'm into it. All right. See, this is why I stop at five. Sorry, Veggie Wagon, you're a good sport. <laughs> Got to give him props. Uh, oh, and I have the Archive Trap and the Desperado. Yeah, we're in. We're into it. <laughs> okay. Ah, but see, now Veggie Wagon is using their knowledge of my deck against me, mulliganing to make my mill plan less effective. <laughs> Let's go, Keykeeper, into Deep Muck Desperado. And I had a pretty sick vintage cube match yesterday. Uh, sadly, I didn't record it, but I played it against an opponent who had like time walk, and I think probably had a mox in there too. And I, I was able to beat them with grit and skill. It was, I mean, it was BK, so you know, take it, take it how you will. But it was a fun match, almost as fun as getting to play Vigilac in three times. <laughs> I think he might have had two moxes, actually, now that I think about it. Now, thinking back on it. Ooh, another Deep Muck Desperado. Let's go. Let's go. Two Deep Muck Desperados and a Sterling Key Keeper. Let's see if I can draw some lands. Lands would be really nice here. Because if I can hit some lands, then I'll have the mana to do all the things I want. Mm. All right, land is good. Desperado. I mean... If I draw a land, I'm just going to fire off Archive Trap, Mill Set, Mill 19. <laughs> uh, and then I've got Drake plus use the Key Keeper, Mill 6. Like, we're just dead, done in like a few turns. <laughs> Hopefully my uh, Deep Mucks aren't getting killed. All right, Frontier Seeker. All you're doing is, is getting my making my Mill plan one card better. <laughs> Sadly, that wasn't a search their deck. <laughs> All right, Vengeful Townsfolk. All right, land? 
new land. Hmm. I think I'm going to play the Drake here because that makes Archive Trap cheaper. And then this turn, I can still play Fierce Retribution if this if this Townsfolk attacks. And puts a blocker on the board. Yeah, this is definitely good. Even if one of these deep, deep muck desperados gets killed, it's just not that big of a deal. I don't think they have any way to search their deck that we've seen. There can't be that many ways in red white. Even the Evolving Wilds in this set doesn't search. Why do they hate our Archive Trap? Free Archive Trap. Nurturing Pixie. Okay. Frontier Seeker really should search. It's seeking the frontier. It's searching the frontier. It, it kind of should count. <laughs> uh, playing around uh, the archive trap by not, or the, the mill plan by not searching with that. Oh, am I going to get, one of my Desperados is getting shot down here for four damage. It's a shame, really. Oh, no. All right, well, let's just pass the turn then. <laughs> Guess I'll take one. And then now I can go Archive Trap for 19. And then that's almost it. <laughs> and, then, and then cast a, like a Lullaby or a Lock Picker, and then bam. Is this an Evolving Wilds? No, I know this is not. This card's interesting. I wonder if it's good. If you can afford it, it seems like it could be pretty good. The funny thing about this is the Desperados and stuff actually just give you a bunch of ways to... Oh, plus some plus three. Okay. To, to just play good defense anyway. Mm, I might not mill here. Hold on. I'm going to... Fierce Retribution. So let's go Key Keeper. Let's target the Mine Raider. Mill, mill, and then I can Fierce Retribution, and then Lullaby. Like, I, this isn't a race, so why don't I just play in a way that puts me in a spot to, to not lose to random beatdowns here? Like, these, these things being two fours is huge. It's just saved me so much damage. Okay, and then let's go Fierce Retribution, destroy target attacking creature, or kill the Vengeful Townsfolk. Take three. And this is 21 cards, so we're pretty close to milling out. Um, now I can just go Lullaby, mill six. I mean, I, could, I don't even need the Archive Trap, honestly. The Key Keeper is going to do the trick here, too, because now I just pass, and then I get to mill for six off the Key Keeper, and then mill for six off the Key Keeper. That's already 12 cards right there if I needed to. Three mana two four. A lot of three mana two fours makes me optimistic about the blocking potential in this set. I will say that. So this can't tap mounts. I can't tap the the bighorn, huh? Funny. Concede for one more game. No, I will not be doing that. I think that that would be BM, as they say. I'm at seventeen. I really can't imagine that taking four here is going to be too much of a problem. And I certainly don't want to block with the Drake, because otherwise I can't cast Archive Trap to get those last eight cards. Oh, I am going to upkeep Archive Trap. It's, it is true. Yes, especially if I conceded and then we got paired again, that would just be kind of BM here. I wasn't blocking with it anyway. All right, I got a 13. I mean, I actually could block with a Desperado too. Would be fine. Mm hmm it's fitting the last spell cast in this deck, in this whole draft, is going to be Archive Trap. Boom. <laughs> and Archive Trap, Mill 2. <laughs> Geyser Drake is really good. I, I've been really impressed with Geyser Drake. Boink. <laughs> and that'll do it. The 7 1, lost round 1, won the next 7. Did you have fun? Yeah. Okay, that, that one I did. All right, let's take a look at this deck, because this deck was great. And so the main thing that this deck had going was double lock picker, archive trap, double desperado. But part of the reason this deck was so successful 
was it had a lot of good defensive stuff too. So Dust Animus, obviously great. Just a huge bomb. And mostly in this deck, it was to make them spend a couple turns dealing with it while I, I milled them out. But Double Steer Clear, Ariette's Lullaby was amazing. I don't know if you saw those games, but it just kept being great. Fierce Retribution, Getaway Glamour, Failed Fording. <laughs> and then the, then it has the whole bounce pack. That's a whole, totally different thing. So I had a bunch of white removal spells. Even Repulse kind of counts there too. But then I also had the double town ain't big enough with double lock picker and the visage bandit and like just getting to like move all my cards around. Shepherd of the Clouds is like additional redundancy to get something back. This was just a, a well-oiled machine and uh, yeah, it worked really nicely. Crab was just a great little defensive thing. Like I had some good cards in the sideboard. A, a key keeper, shift and grift and plan the heist were some like things that could have could have been used. Peerless Rope Master, I don't know. There, there are some cards, but overall, this deck, in the in the, you know, it's on the short list for one of the sweetest decks I'll draft in this format. In draft number three, so uh, really enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you did too. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate you hanging out, watching as I draft nonsense or sometimes actual nonsense that's good. Uh, this is one of my first Outlaws of Thunder Junction drafts, and I anticipate doing some more. This this format has been a lot of fun. So you'll see a mix of these and cube drafts, but. Either way, one every day. So I'll be back tomorrow with another draft and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.